Hello everyone, welcome to your daily dose of astrology and tarot. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So I'm super excited to be doing this. Um, I'm really loving this new uh, series here, yeah? And, oh, sorry guys, mm. before we actually get started, I want to encourage you guys to engage, to definitely, you know, thank you for the likes um, that, you, that you've already given in terms of this session. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. I do want to encourage you guys to share your experiences in terms of these energies, uh, you know, with the daily astrology and all that. I definitely encourage you guys to share in the comments section how this is affecting you and how you're kind of resonating with this. If you want to say watch it in the like in the beginning of your day and then go through your day and then come back to it and kind of share your experiences and how it actually translated for you in your life, that would be super helpful. First of all, I love hearing from you guys. You know that. But then also, it's really going to help me in my studies and in my re research to help fine tune uh, and even pick out different things to look out for when I'm reading into these things for the collective. Yeah, obviously I'm doing this all for the benefit of the collective. And so any way that I can make it better or any way that I can fine tune it or anything that I can uh, have a deeper understanding of what things may resonate for you or what doesn't or, you know, just how things actually manifest in your life would be super helpful for me in my studies and my research. So I definitely encourage you guys to get engaged. Let me know how this is resonating for you and all that stuff. And also anything that like when I'm doing these astrology reports, I mean, Daily Dose is going to end up moving to a Patreon anyway, but we're still going to have videos for the moon phases and maybe any some like extra transits like, you know, the, the moments when Mercury goes into retrograde or when Mars or Venus goes into retrograde. I'm going to be focusing on videos for those too. So definitely, again, share your experiences with me. Again, I love hearing from you guys and it's going to help me in my studies and my research. Yeah. All right, kids, let's get into it. So today. Um, I labeled today a, a day for creation. All right, we have a really it's we have a really beautiful day ahead of us. And even while I was um, you know reading into this, you know preparing and you know looking at the chart yesterday and writing down all my notes, I could feel the excitement, the exuberance, and and the the creative potential of the day already coming through uh, while I was you know getting my my thoughts together for this, but. The main aspects that we have for today are um, the moon having crossed into Leo that happened last night and for all day we have a sextile between the sun and the moon which is the main reason as to why today feels like a day for creation. All right, but let's start with the moon. Last night, late last night, I believe, the moon crossed from Cancer into Leo. Now this is a really nice placement. Me personally. Uh, I was born with the moon in Leo in my natal chart, um, so, <laughs> and you guys know me, I have this wild, crazy, expressive side of myself, right? So with the moon in Leo, this is a really beautiful time to focus on your sense of self-expression, okay? And, and with all of the transits, uh, I'm sorry, well, yeah, all of like the transits and everything that we've been talking about ever since I started keeping track, which would have been back at the full moon of Scorpio and everything. Um, everything has been promoting us towards greater self-expression, understanding deeper aspects of ourselves, realigning ourselves with our paths, with a truer form of a path that would resonate with us on a deep level, on a soul level, on a personal level, right? So with the moon in Leo for like the next two days, I believe, um, we're going to have a time of, uh, of strong propensity towards self-expression. Now, the, the, the downside of having the moon in Leo is um, one of the dark aspects of Leo is that you can, you tend to, there, there can be a tendency to slip into um, a bit of selfishness or just a bit of self-centered energies and, and and not to say that that's a that you're a bad person or you're wrong for that it's just it's a little easier than normal with leo uh leo is a very loyal very loving very expressive very community community or family oriented energy 
But Leo also is all about the self, is all about self-expression. And sometimes that can eclipse or overshadow a lot of other situations in your life. So over the next few days, just be careful um, in terms of a tendency to feel, uh, be a little bit more all about the self than normal, okay? I, I, I don't want, I, I definitely want to pr uh, promote authentic self-expression here. And I don't want to kill any sort of feelings towards wanting to express yourself or maybe even needing to express yourself. But just remember that you can kind of get lost in the sauce when it comes to being so self-oriented like Leo, okay? I, and and I'm, just, I'm just putting that out there just as a little bit of a, a little bit of a warning, just to keep that in mind, okay? Um, but other than that, you know, having the moon in Leo can help you feel more excited, more exuberant, um, again, more wanting to express a lot of who you truly are and what it is you truly feel, all right? Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about is the sextile between the sun and the moon, and that is happening all day today, okay? And a sextile is a very creative, creatively, uh, 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 is a potentially creative energy, okay? Now, a sextile is one of the minor aspects, even though it's, it is a positive aspect. It's, it's, it's considered a minor aspect just because you have to choose, like I've said in the past, you have to choose to want to work with those energies. Now, with the moon being in Leo, and Leo being a creative and expressive sign anyway, it feels like it's going to be an easier time for us to want to take advantage of this sextile between the sun and the moon. And when it comes to sextiles, we're all adults here, but the word sex is in that sextile. And you know, sex is creative, you know, sexual energy is creative energy. The art, or well, yeah, okay, the art, or the act of sex, sexual activity, can potentially create a whole uh, a human being or if you want to channel that energy you can help you, you can use it to help you be creative right so with this sextile between the sun and the moon your inner outer uh, reality your your masculine your feminine again masculine and feminine that creates life all right so there there this is a this is a time for creative self expression over the next few days which is really really beautiful. Well actually no. The sextile just is is happening all day today but the moon is in Leo for the next few days. Okay. Um <clears throat> let's see let's see let's see. I talked about all of this already, didn't I? Providing yes, yeah, so the sextile between the sun and the moon is providing a fertile atmosphere for the development of new ideas that are in a strong that are in strong alignment with your sense of self. And then the moon in Leo supports this as the Leo as Leo is the is the sign of the self and the sign of well a, a creative a expression of of the self. Right. Okay. Now moving forward. Early in the morning, we do have Jupiter, which creates an opposition to the moon. Now oppositions are technically neutral, okay? Now, oppositions are where the planets are at about 180 degrees from each other on opposite sides of the chart. And oppositions give you a clear view of the two energies individually in their specific sides, on their specific sides. It gives you, it helps to give you a very clear view of two different energies that are directly opposing each other. And then the, the challenge with an opposition is to work on fusing those energies together, okay? And it tends to be fairly easy to fuse the energies together when they are directly opposing each other because you can see them clearly for what they are on opposite sides. It's like two sides of, it's like, like yeah, two sides. Uh, two sides of the same coin, okay? So with this opposition between Jupiter and the moon, this provides an opportunity for expansion with towards already creative and expressive oriented mind, okay? Bringing, and, it, and, and the, 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 the opposition here, or the, 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 excuse me, the energies of Jupiter in opposition with the moon has the ability to uh, provide um, luck, expansion, like I said, um, and a t it just felt like a, a, a ton of happy vibes. So if you can, if you can really, depending where you are mentally, okay, I'm not going to sit here and assume that everybody's in a good mental state at, any, at all the time, right? However, with the moon and Leo, you, you could feel a little better than you have normally. Again, 
That also depends on your personal chart and where things are and how things are transiting for you. So if you're savvy enough, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and do the, the research I just heard and, and look at how, you know, look at what the moon is transiting, transiting for you in your chart, okay? But overall, I feel like having the moon in Leo is fairly a good thing for everybody, okay? But if you can look, if you could take that Leo moon energy plus Jupiter, which I believe is still in Pisces, and Pisces, oh shoot, I should have looked at that. I could be wrong about that one, but I do feel like Jupiter is, Jupiter has been in Pisces for a while. Um, okay, but it, we'll say, let's say Jupiter is in Pisces. Excuse me, guys, I totally dropped the ball on that one, but I didn't even think about this while I was writing all this down. But um, Pisces is the sign of the collective. Okay, of perfection, but also perfection on a spiritual level. So this, to me, this... I'm sorry, guys. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm glad I stopped to check because I was wrong. Jupiter is actually in Aquarius. Now, and this opposition between the moon and Jupiter lasts... It starts like around 8 a.m. in the morning, some, somewhere like that, and it lasts throughout the day, okay? Now... Jupiter in Aquarius can, uh, uh, opposing the moon, Aquarius is a sign of, of uh, the collective, technic, kind of, in, in my point of view, I can definitely see it as a sign of the collective, but it, the way I see it, Aquarius is where we start to enter into the realm of, <clears throat> collect, of, of really connecting with the people around us and, and, um, you know, the, the Aquarius tends to be a sign of philanthropy and stuff like that. So with Jupiter opposing the uh, opposing the moon, Jupiter being in Aquarius and the moon being in Leo, this can kind of help you balance out um, your thought process when it comes to other people and, and your sense of expression. It can help remind you, um, remind you to bring a sense of collective quality into your expression. Um, it can help ground you a little bit in terms of it's very, it's not just you around here, right? Um, so that to me is really helpful and beneficial in terms of uh, this expressive energy, okay? And then uh, with that, Jupiter also is trining the sun. And it feels like this could help you open up on a soul level to some, to some things that you may not have been open to in the past, or you may have experienced some sort of resistance to. Aquarius also tends to be a sign of innovation, okay, and technology. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, so this can again with this with this opposition here, you could get a clear view as to new ways that you could do things, new ways that you could express yourself, or you could just be open to. The, the prospect of entertaining new ideas and new ways of self-expression with Jupiter being an expansive uh, energy and planet as well, okay? Excuse me, guys. So, moving forward, we also have Mercury conjunct the Sun today, and a conjunction is where the, the signs are, or I'm sorry, the planets are kind of like, the energies of the planets kind of fuse together almost. Uh, the, the lines blur between the, the energies of two planets. So with Mercury conjunct the sun today, this is adding an extra element of ease when it comes to authentic, soulful self-expression. A lot of the barriers could really be broken down today um, in terms of ways that you have, ways that you can express yourself, ways that you may want to express yourself, okay? It may be really easier with this conjunction between Mercury and the, and the sun. It may be easier to, uh, to, to understand deeper elements of yourself or um, deeper thought processes. It could also open your mind to new ways of learning, new ways of thinking, again, and new ways of communication. Okay. Now, last thing I want to say before I do a little bit, a little bit of a card pull with this uh, is Saturn is opposing the moon in the very early hours of the morning. All right. Now, with Saturn currently in retrograde, this could help you, again, this could be another energy of helping you break restrictions towards creativity and self-expression and mentally oriented creative blocks. So with this creative energy that we have today between the sextile, with the sextile between the sun and the moon, um, Saturn being in retrograde 
which is an energy of kind of like going back or reworking or revisiting things or even breaking through barriers. Saturn being a restrictive and confining and sometimes even a destructive energy. This could really help you break some creative blocks. All of a sudden there could be, I just heard a creative windfall that just that just lands on you today, completely seemingly out of nowhere. However, it's not coming out of nowhere because if you remember, Mercury is conjunct the sun today. So with the Mercury, with Mercury conjuncting the sun, there's also like a deeper, a, a, a deeper element. There's an easier element of getting down to more deeper aspects of your soul that your mind your conscious thought process may have closed, been closed off to or blocked from, okay? So Saturn, Saturn opposing the moon like this could really help you break some creative blocks, could help you cre break some mental fog, some mental confinement and all that stuff, yeah? So if you do end up getting any sort of creative uh, 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 light bulbs, some like eureka moments, make sure to write those down, uh, record it on a voice message or something, like record that, get that down so that you have it later so that you can move forward, move forward for it when the time is right or when you're ready to. Or if you just feel like being creative in the moment, go ahead and do it, okay? It's really going to help you. It's really going to be beneficial. And most likely it's going to feed your soul. It's going to feed your sense of, sense of self. Right, because we have this creative and expressive moon in Leo. Yeah, uh, let's see. There's one last thing here. Oh, Saturn is also trining Mercury all day long. Okay, so this is providing extra harmonized support in terms of communication, and again, even maybe potentially new ways to learn. Okay. Yay, guys. I'm really excited for this day. It's going to be a really good one. Um, I really do feel like it's going to be a good one. So let's get a little bit of cards here in terms of these energies. I definitely want to start with the Moonology deck. We're going to give this a few shuffles. One. Again, I highly encourage you guys to leave in the comments how this is resonating for you. Yeah, this is two. And again, like I said earlier, if you want to come back to it later in the day um, and, and share your experiences from the day, I highly recommend that. Again, I love hearing from you guys. So let me know. Yeah, this is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty, guys. So, uh, in terms of the energies, the the uh, planetary energies for the day, the astrological energies for the day, what messages do we have for the collective? Things to look out for, encouragement, all kinds of good stuff. I'm gonna get three cards here. We do have one so far. Okay, uh, excellent, beautiful. New moon eclipse. Expect powerful change, and I highly, <clears throat> and I definitely think. That uh, the the the, the um, aspects with Saturn are really going to help you make that change. Okay, both uh, the opposition with the Moon and then also the trying with Mercury. That's all helping you create some sort of change in your life. Beautiful new Moon in Sagittarius. Luck is on your side, and I do feel like that has a lot to do also with the Moon being in Leo. Luck being on your side. Again, also all the other aspects we have going on here. But this is like luck in terms of your sense of creative self-expression. We're just going to leave it right there, okay? We actually got four cards. So we're going to look at these last two here. Excellent. Next card we have is the full moon in Cancer. A personal issue reaches resolution. So today, with the moon being in Leo... Okay, today, but also tomorrow and... I really, I feel like the moon moves into Virgo at like l uh, late, at, maybe around seven o'clock at night tomorrow. I, I do believe that by the 17th of June, we are going to have the moon in Virgo. But over this period of having the moon in Leo, um, especially with this personal issues reach a resolution, you're going to most likely, if you have a personal issue that you, that you know, Ooh, okay, that has been creatively blocked, I just heard. So you could have some sort of beef or issues with somebody, whether it be in the workplace with a friend or a family member or a loved one, that you've been feeling blocked in terms of uh, expressing or communicating about. 
The moon in Leo, again, with all the other aspects we have going on here, could really help push you to want to speak up, to want to say something about it. But it also could give you an energy of um, figuring out how to do so. Some of that creative block could have been you didn't know what to say, you didn't know how to say it. But with the moon in Leo here, this could give you an extra boost in terms of feeling confident in yourself enough to really speak up. Now, keep in mind, with that, the downside of having the moon in Leo, like I said earlier, could lead towards a propensity towards being too self-centered, okay? So if you do have a situation with someone that you need to really hash out or talk about, make sure that you keep yourself in a place of, yes, getting your point across and expressing what it is you're feeling or how it is you felt over this time period, but also make sure that you try and listen, okay? It's not just about showing, uh, 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 throwing your piece or spewing your piece out there and just expecting everyone to just align with it. Definitely express yourself from an authentic point of view, but also be willing to listen to the other points of view here. That's really going to help this resolution come to pass, come to light. And then the, the other, the connecting card with that is hold your vision. Okay, so stand your ground, all right? Don't let anybody walk all over you. Leo definitely is not about to let that happen, okay? But also, make sure that you're still in the, in the in an energy of wanting to listen and wanting to communicate clearly. Now, also with the conjunction between Mercury and the Sun, again, this could make it much easier for you to consciously understand what it is you're feeling on the deepest depths of your soul. And it's going to really help you communicate from a much more soulful or authentic point of view, okay? So I, I definitely feel like there could be some energies of people just kind of like feeling inspired or feeling understand, feeling being in a, in a mindset of understanding how they can, can communicate effectively about something that has been an issue for them. But again, keep in mind, it's not all about you. Uh, Jupiter in Aquarius does time in, in, the expansive energy of Jupiter in Aquarius can kind of help you, especially with that opposition with the moon, can help you see the bigger picture, see other sides of the situation, okay? Let's get some tarot going. Yeah, five shuffles. One. Two. Uh, and I'm using the Wonderland deck again. I really, I love this deck. So I'm going to, I definitely want to keep going with that. Yeah. This is three. Four. And five. All righty, guys. We're going to start. I'm just going to get a few clarifiers here. Uh, well, would you look at that? Look at what we're starting out on the bottom of the deck. Strength. There's that Leo energy right there. Okay, this is beautiful. I love that type. I love that synchronicity. We're going to start with expect powerful change. What clarification can you bring us, please, Spirit, in terms of this powerful change we can expect? Uh-huh. What kind of clarity, please, Spirit? Okay. Okay. So much Leo energy is coming through here. All right. We had strength at the bottom of the deck that officially represents Leo. We also have the sun here, even more Leo energy, plus the six of wands, all kinds of Leo energy. Now, expect powerful change is clarified by the Sun, the Six of Wands, and the Four of Swords, okay? So what I'm getting from this is victory, success, again, powerful change, and it's successful. It's a successful change, all right? But the Four of Swords reminds you to stay, keep a level head, okay? Make sure you are calm, cool, and collected. Make sure that you are balanced here. Again, make sure that you are open to as many sides of the situation as you can be. Be inclusive here. That was another thing that I wrote in my notes that I forgot to say. With the moon being in Leo, yes, it's very self-oriented, but you've got to make sure that you remain as inclusive as possible. Again, it's not all about you. Okay, excellent. But I definitely see victory, okay? And that victory comes from the sense of self, the soul, 
the sun, okay? Also, there is illumination here with the sun. So you actually might want to, at least for today, you might want to take the, some time to, uh, in terms of, you know, this, exp this powerful change that could be coming through for you. Instead of, if you're not even, not, uh, let me not say instead of, if you are not really in an energy of really trying to express anything, you have nothing you want to hash out or any beef or anything like that, take the time to use these energies to communicate with yourself. Yes? Four of swords with the sun. Okay? Meditate on you. Focus on you. Allow this self-oriented energy and this self-expression energy of the moon in Leo orient you towards or help you understand new ways that you can express yourself, new creative adventures you may want to go on, um, uh, and just deepen your sense of self and who exactly who it is you are. That's going to bring in this change for you. That's going to bring in this victory, this celebration, this recognition, public recognition that the Six of Wands also represents, okay? Excellent. Moving forward, luck is on your side. What can you, what clarity can you bring us, please, Spirit, in terms of luck being on your side? Oh, I forgot to say, I'll say it in a second. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Strength, again, at the bottom of the deck. All this Leo energy here. Okay, before I go any further, I want to make sure that I mention what's at the bottom of the Moonology deck. It is step out of your <laughs> step out of your comfort zone, and then right underneath that is the new moon in Leo. Confidence is your key to success. All right, the moon in Leo is definitely going to give you a boost of confidence. Okay, but you got to step out of your comfort zone, and the best way that you do that is you just believe in yourself. All right, you really, uh, really align yourself. You really allow these energies of the moon in Leo to help you uh, accentuate that sense of self belief and self confidence. Okay, now luck is on your side. Okay, is clarified by the Queen of Cups. You really benefit from being emotionally aware, emotionally available, yes, but maintaining your emotional boundaries. There's also going, to, especially if you're having some sort of issues with people that need to be discussed or need to be worked through at this time, the Queen of Cups is an empathic, strongly empathic, very psychically in tuned individual. She's the type of person, she's the, 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 the archetype of the empath, okay? She feels everybody's emotions. So luck is really going to be on your side when, yes, you're focusing on how to authentically express yourself, but you balance that with the energies of being compassionate and emotionally open. Of course, keep your emotional boundaries. Don't let anybody just like completely infiltrate you and, and like completely like tsunami over you with their emotions, but allow yourself to be emotionally available and emotionally aware, aware of the emotions and the feelings of others as well. Okay, strength. That is going to, and strength here, yes, again, is representing Leo, but strength is also representing the restraint, okay? Allowing your ego or your sense of self to say what it needs to say or give you whatever information it has for you, but then also having the strength to remain compassionate, okay? Again, it's not all about you. Even though we have these energies that are promoting this sense of self and this sense of self-expression, luck is really going to be on your side when you temper that, when you balance that with being emotionally aware of others. It's really going to help you. I, I feel like in some cases, it's really going to impress the people that you are communicating with, the people that you are interacting with, okay? That could be an extra boon for you. Moving forward, um, I want to do these last two together. A personal re issue reaches resolution and hold your vision. Okay? Some clarity on these two, please, Spirit. That's enough. Okay. All right. Well, look at that. We do have the Eight of Cups at the bottom of the deck. This could potentially be a good thing. I feel like there's going to be a lot that's left in the past. You're going to be able to walk away from things that no longer serve you. You're and also, I'm hearing creatively, the Eight of Cups representing creativity, creatively in your life. You're going to be able to walk away from some of the blockages that may have stopped you from being creative, ex creatively expressive in the past. Um, I'm definitely seeing these Eight Cups as 
the buildup of it it, it. it does kind of feel like in some cases, some of you have been actually trying to work on something um, and you just keep trying and trying and trying and it doesn't seem to work. I feel like you're going to be able to finally leave that behind. Yeah. You're finally going to be, okay, so the biggest thing that I'm feeling here for you guys is creative blocks that are going to be, because I'm definitely seeing these eight cups as a wall. A wall towards between you and your creative expression of what it is you really want to be doing in some cases. Clarifying this, we do have the chariot with the three of wands. All right, so there is definitely going to be able to, there's a potential today for certain energies that have been, been blocking you or, or restricting you, you have the potential to walk away from that and to, to really get into a deeper alignment with who you truly are, balance to balance opposing aspects of yourself. Uh, with the move, with the sun conjunct the Mercury, I definitely feel like there, <laughs> the sun conjunct the Mercury. No, the sun conjunct Mercury. I feel like you're going to be able to get down to the bottom of the of some things that have been blocking your sense of self or blocking you creatively. Um, and and you're going to be there's going to be the ability to uh, fuse together, fuse yourself together with the sextile between the sun and the moon. Um, a, a, a creative self-expression. I keep saying that, but create new opportunities, birth new things into your life. And that's going to be directly connected to you being able to bring opposing sides of yourself together. That's going to lead you down your path in a more authentic way. The chariot with the three of wands. Okay. This is so beautiful. You guys, I love this. I do want to close this session out with some Oracle guidance. I pulled out the dragon Oracle cards yesterday because I was playing with some stuff and it's been on my table and I'm being guided to, um, to work with this energy dragon. I, I, I can't put my finger on it as to why right now, but the energies of dragons are really resonating with this this Leo energy right now. I mean, obviously dragons tend to be fire breathers. Fire, uh, Leo is a fire sign, so I'm definitely feeling that connection there. But there's something about the dragons that are wanting to come through in this session, so let's do that. Yeah, five shuffles. One, two, three, four, And five. All right. Closing message from the dragons, please, spirit. There it is right there. Wow. Oh, my God. This is really quite perfect. We have magenta dragon. Enables you to bring forward your soul wisdom. Okay. Mercury conjunct the sun. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Awaken your soul memories and higher spiritual understanding. Prepare for accelerated ascension. So beautiful. All right, let's 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 see what the book has to say about this. Magenta Dragon. Bear with me, kids. This one is not in a chronological or alphabetical order, so it's going to take me a second. To, there it is. Okay. The guidance with this card says, this is a card of accelerated ascension. A magenta dragon is here to remind you that you are an illuminated soul carrying much wisdom. It is helping you to dissolve any remaining veils of illusion and preparing you to become an enlightened one. It has come to, ne to you now to remind you that all is love for we are all one. It is time to see th all things with the wise inner eyes of truth. Treat everyone as if they were you. Yes. Yes. Especially with this moon in Leo energy. Treat everyone as if uh, the moon in Leo, but then also the queen of cups here. Yeah. Treat everyone as if you were pampering or treating yourself. Yes. Your guidance is to sit quietly with your magenta dragon and allow the door to your vast soul memories to open. When you reveal to yourself who you truly are, you will help to bring forward the new golden age. Ah, so beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next transit report 
or aspect report. We'll call them an aspect report, yes, for our next aspect report tomorrow. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye.